In the 30 to 40 years following the Civil War, America transformed itself into an economic powerhouse that became the world's leading producer of coal, oil, and steel. In fact, by the end of the century, the country was producing more steel than Germany and Great Britain combined. But that economic transformation led to class distinctions and a stark division of wealth that were never envisioned by the Founding Fathers and which profoundly changed the nature of the still young nation. What were the forces that caused this new America, which historians have dubbed the Gilded Age? Did it stifle or actually create more opportunities for its citizens and for those who hoped to become its citizens? And are the conflicts engendered between the haves and have-nots during this period of our history still with us today? To some of the questions raised by the Gilded Age, a brilliant new documentary that will premiere on American Experience here on PBS on February 6th. Take a look. Gilded has the sense of a patina covering something else. It's the shiny exterior and the rot underneath. By the time New York's elite gathered at the Waldorf Ballroom, the richest 4,000 families in the country, less than 1% of all Americans, had scooped up nearly as much treasure as the other 11.6 million families combined. We are the rich, one party goer remarked. We own America. We got it, God knows how, but we intend to keep it if we can. And joining us now is the producer and director of The Gilded Age, Sarah Colt. Sarah, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. So Sarah, I made a stab at it the introduction, but I wonder if you could give us a thumbnail sketch or description of the Gilded Age. You know, um, what time period are we talking about exactly, and, and what were its defining characteristics? Well, the Gilded Age um, uh, it spreads from 1870 to early 1900s, and it's a period of a tremendous growth in this country. It's really a transformative period. Yeah. It's the period when we go from a, a country of regions, a farming nation, to a nation that's connected by railroads and has embraced industrial capitalism. The country grows at such a pace that it's never been repeated and only is now potentially being repeated in China. Yeah. Um, it's a time of progress mm -hmm. and people are, Americans are very excited about this notion of progress. But what ends up happening during this period, much to some people's sort of great shock um, and surprise is that progress seems to spawn poverty. Yeah that progress and poverty are somehow connected. Mm -hmm. That industrial capitalism, while it creates tremendous wealth and creates you know, railroads, it also comes mm -hmm. with it mm -hmm. um, problems, big yeah. problems. So let's talk about the conventional views of the Gilded Age. One version, which is the one I guess uh, I grew up with, uh, the circles that I ran in, um, uh, paints the Gilded Age as a rapacious period of exploitation and depredation where the richest 1% uh, made its wealth on the backs of the toiling masses. Um, and that as a result, America lost its ability to claim that it was still the land of opportunity. Uh, how factual is that version? While there was opportunity, there were a lot of things against people. People who were hardworking weren't necessarily going to do well. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't just that if you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps, mm -hmm. you were going to do great. Industrial capitalism created jobs, but the jobs weren't necessarily yeah. jobs that people wanted. Yeah. Um, or if they they weren't being paid properly, yeah. they weren't pay, being paid a living wage. And one narrative is that the Gilded Age was made possible because the government took hands off, was not involved, and allowed these geniuses of industry to exercise their talents and, uh, and, and, and exercise their will to create this enormous wealth that everybody ultimately benefited from. Government was heavily involved. And it was a question of what was government's role. The great industrialists were, were helped by government through tariffs, through um, yeah, uh, programs that allowed them to create all of this wealth and create great businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, that isn't necessarily and, and, a bad and thing. And literally, in certain cases, protected them against the com com combined forces of the working well, one, uh, like unions. one of the questions is, does the government come down, if there's a dispute between an owner mm, of a, yeah. a company and it, the people who work at the company and the government is coming in, what side are they going to take? And that happened over and over and over mm. again during the Gilded Age. And over and over mm. and over again, government came down on the side mm. of the owners. Yeah. So listen, the, the documentary is in a way uh, told through a series of 
of biographies of people important in the Gilded Age, many of whom we know, J.P. Morgan, uh, Carnegie, and, and uh, William Jennings Bryan, but there's some people that we've never heard, at least I never heard of, Mary Elizabeth Lease. So she's fascinating because she, you know, women couldn't vote um, in most places in the United States in the 1890s, but um, Mary Elizabeth Lease led the populist movement. So we talk about populism today. Um, the populists were founded as a third party um, and Mary Elizabeth Lease was at the very birth of the populist party, the People's yeah. Party in Kansas. And she could tell us, she could make a speech and people were riveted. Thousands of people showed yeah. up to hear her speak. All right, Sarah, it's a wonderful documentary. I hope a lot of people see it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank today. you so much for having me. The American Experience documentary, The Gilded Age, premieres on PBS February 6th at 9 p.m. Check your local listings for additional viewing opportunities.